that um, I hope that in the coming days that the executive will be able to provide greater clarity than the Westminster government has. Um, can I, as a member of the, uh, declare an interest as a member of the policing board, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but also put on record our thanks to the police officers who will be having to enforce many of these regulations where there's an absence of clarity, their job will be made much more difficult. But as members here will know, and I hope recognise, that the police service of Northern Ireland are the envy of Western Europe in terms of the human rights compliance, and I hope and trust that that will stand them in good stead. Uh, and they are already having to uh, uh, arrest and detain people who claim they have uh, the coronavirus. As a, uh, and indeed, we have heard horrendous tales of shopkeepers being spat at or coughed over by people who think it's funny. People are frightened, but they should be frightened. And I hope, um, uh, Minister, that the message will go out. We have rightly concentrated on people who are most vulnerable and older people in particular. But I think many of us already know that there are children in intensive care across these islands who are, have also fallen uh, to this horrendous infection. Uh, and, and therefore, I would ask that the public health me messaging uh, be stepped up. The other um, query that has been raised with me, Mr Deputy Speaker, is from the private nursing home care providers in relation to testing and how uh, government and the private sector can best work together because we need the private uh, residential sector uh, to look after our older people and those with disabilities who cannot be cared for in their own home. And I would hope that uh, the Minister could give some reassurance uh, uh, to them. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I, like many others, uh, wish our Minister for Health all the best. I know that people will be looking to political leaders, but as Paul Gavin said earlier, there will be others who will also look to their religious and spiritual leaders, and I think we should also remember them today, that they too will be on the front line, particularly in those most difficult of circumstances when funerals are going to be restricted to two only, and all of the things that we hold dear will, will not uh, be there for us to hold on to in the, these most trying of times. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Jim Allister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I want to begin by um, commending the Health Minister.